we do en- we do encourage you to use the Q and A um, to ask any questions. Go ahead and do that during the sessions, and we will uh, get to those near the end of each of the sessions. Um, and if we get a complex answer or something that that, that merits some additional discussion, I'm going to put the Slack channel on our chat here and you'll be able to join uh, the Slack channel for OSLCOP uh, and in the general tag, go ahead and general channel, go ahead and uh, we can continue those conversations. So um, appreciate everybody joining us today. And we're about ready to get started with our first session on enterprise data dependency management. And I'll be happy to do a quick introduction to our presenters. We have three different presenters here for this first section session um and uh we'll let them to get started and uh, i'll quit talking here momentarily so uh our first session uh uh is going to be uh karina monique schaefer karina is an experienced project manager with passion for technology she's contributed in the development of technology and products in the financial healthcare automotive and it industries at drager she's the owner of the project management process and project lead of the enterprise data dependency management system Besides ensuring stakeholder satisfaction, organizi- organizing teams, and coordinating solution of project issues, uh, Karina has fo- founded a robotics course where children learn basic mechanics and programming in order to bring their own ideas to life. Uh, also joining is Hans Scholz Murbeck. Hans uh, ensures together with his team at Drager the delivery of all IT services utilized in product development. And that includes enterprise PLM platform together with more than 40 IT services for mechanical, electrical engineering and software development. Prior to joining Drager, he held engineering management positions at Philips Healthcare and ABB. He's a master's degree in physics and PhD in electrical engineering. And Jay Kumar, uh, has 20 year, two years of experience in POM domains. His current focus includes digital threat enablement, MBSE, and product sustainability, among other things. So we have a great collection of experience that are joining us with this first session. And with that, I will hand over the, the uh, mic and let the, the teams begin. Thank you so much. Thank you very much um, for the kind introduction and thanks for the opportunity for presenting our topic here um, at your conference. Um, Enterprise data dependency management um, has been implemented at Drager um, over the course of the last um, two years or so. It is now in production use um, since the beginning of the month. And um, I want to give you an overview of um, the um, architecture uh, we choose for the implementation. Uh, We will give you some insights into uh, the actual um, system. Um, And finally, uh, we will comment upon um, our usage of OSLC, um, where it was helpful, um, where it left um, something um, to be desired. So if you take a look um, at this picture here, um, largely inspired by OSLC, um, taken in fact from the OSLC webpage, um, adapted slightly um, for our um, situation here at Vega, um, you can recognize uh, that we do have um, several what we call data containers. Um, they are shown here um, as um, as um, circles um, with a green boundary. And um, over time, what we want to achieve is to um, enable data linking um, across all these data containers. Um, So establishing um, links uh, between uh, the different um, data elements in these containers. We want to have the capability um, to implement automatic change detection. Um, So if a link is connecting a source and a target and the target changes, Uh, We want to signal this uh, via the link status. And finally, uh, we want to enable the capability um, to provide baselining of link sets um, across um, all existing links. Um, So say um, you're sitting in the PLM platform, you want to do a part release, uh, then what you want to do is to freeze uh, the entire link structure um, across all integrated um, applications. I briefly comment upon um, the systems we have integrated. Um, that's um, if we start at the right side, our requirements management platform. Um, this is based on IBM DOS Next Generation. That comes um, with a very mature um, OSLC implementation. It gives us um, out of the box um, functionality um, we want um, to utilize to the largest possible extent. Our standard system um, is rather in parentheses dump when it comes to data linking. Um, it just permits us to read data and there's nothing else out of the box. Um, our FMIA system, um, FMIA is an acronym for failure modes and effect analysis. 
contains, among other things, um, the entire um, system functional architecture, uh, which is qu of quite some interest um, for the other applications. Then we have our PLM platform, which contains the entire physical, physical product structure. And um, last but not least, our test management platform based on um, IBM um, ELM test management. Uh, the challenge is um, when integrating all these systems with respect to data linking is that they come with vastly different capabilities out of the box. Um, I mentioned um, the IBM tools, which are quite mature. Uh, the rest um, didn't have um, very much um, in terms of out of the box functionality. So therefore, our solution architecture had, had to be flexible enough to accommodate uh, these different capabilities. Finally, um, it is mandatory for us to go indeed for data linking uh, because copying um, would we, data copying uh, would require um, to um, take care um, for the access permissions um, in all the systems which are holding copies. Um, and that's something which is simply not possible in reality. Um, so that's one of the ma major driving factors why we had to go for data linking. Um, last but not least, um, data or link baselining requires us um, to have the capability to flexibly um, work on more or less vast link sets um, and to freeze them. I mean, that was a major driver to go for what we call um, our central link repository. Um, here you see um, a summary of the core functionality provided by EDDM. Um, it starts with data linking. Uh, we distinguish um, two types of links, um, so-called item links. Um, they are connecting endpoints, um, which might change over time. Element links um, are connecting endpoints uh, which are frozen, um, which are baselined. The terminology is different across different systems, but element links are not um, subject um, to EDDM um, change detection. We do have um, a static uh, or a set of four link status values. Valid links uh, means um, source and targets um, are accessible and have not changed um, since the link has been created. Suspect um, is, in essence, the outcome of the automatic change detection. A link goes mm -hmm. to suspect if either link source or target has changed. Invalid um, is an end-user defined status. Um, invalid signifies in invalidation from a business perspective. And dangling means uh, that uh, either source or endpoint of a link has been lost from the system. Automatic change detection means the system automatically um, detects any changes in a source or a target of an EDDM link and sets the link status to, um, to, to, to suspect, and this without um, any user interaction and um, across the entire existing um, EDDM link base. Finally, um, creating link baselines gives the capability um, to assemble a, link, a set of EDDM links, usually by traversing um, existing dependencies recursively, and um, freezing um, this entire link set um, in a so-called um, baseline. In order to implement uh, that functionality, uh, we went um, for the following generic um, high-level um, solution architecture. We provide um, for each data container, uh, we want to integrate into EDDM an EDDM client. Uh, this is natively, as far as possible, integrated um, in the user interface of your respective system. Um, an EDDM server um, can either be embedded um, in one of the data containers. For example, our test management systems comes by and large uh, with this capability. For other systems, we have to provide uh, the functionality uh, from scratch. Uh, the EDDM server gives access um, to all the um, data elements and items in the container, manages all the queries, uh, makes available delegated um, UIs um, for viewing the data. Um, so this is um, tilted um, somehow um, towards um, the OSLC um, terminology. And then last but not least, um, the EDDM central server um, that enables um, EDDM service discovery and um, a quite important detail, um, it provides translation from so-called symbolic links to resolvable links uh, because we cannot afford um, to statically store resolvable links um, into our link repository or locally um, into EDDM enabled systems because normally uh, these resolvable links contain things like um, host names, uh, which might change over time, uh, which can then break on a large scale um, our entire link base. The physical um, deployment architecture um, is shown here in overview. Um, you have um, the different EDDM enabled systems. Um, um, I've listed here our PLM platform based on our Innovator, the test management platform and requirements management platform. 
they come um, with EDDM client and server embedded. All of them um, have one central link editor, um, which gives access um, to all existing EDDM links, and they communicate uh, with a central server, um, which is in our case deployed um, on an AWS backend. Um, it is using a graph database um, in order to um, enable um, rapid um, link traversal and also um, handling of link sets. And this is in particular um, important for um, creating baselines. Links are potentially stored in three different locations. And I know that a lot of you will say how horrible um, uh, this redundant storage is. Uh, but um, our conclusion was uh, this is inevitable um, if you want to um, support all use cases. Um, we have to go for local storage in case uh, that data containers support this. I mean, examples are the IBM tools. And then we have our PLM platform um, as the um, central repository for all links and our graph database um, based on AWS Neptune um, in order to enable rapid um, structure analysis um, of our link sets. Now um, I hand over to my colleague, um, Karina Schäfer. I mean, she will give you I a mean, hands-on insight into um, the current implementation. Karina, you could take over. Yes, thank you, Hans. Now, um, I would like to show you a video displaying EDDM in practice at Dragger with the functionality and the concept that Hans has just mentioned. Please be aware that this is just a recording. EDDM, the Enterprise Data Dependency Management System at Dragger. Within this video, we will show you three examples of the capabilities of our Enterprise Data Dependency Management System at Dragon. First, we will show you some data linking between our PLM system and our test management system. Then, we will see the change detection capabilities, including link maintenance and bulk operations. And finally, we will show you how to baseline some EDDM link sets. As a first example, we will create an EDDM link from a part in our PLM system ARAS Innovator to a test plan in our test management system ETM. For this, we select a part in ARAS. Now, we go to our EDDM tab which is seamless integrated in the RS UI. And from here, we can create a new link by clicking on the New Link button. We select the project. We select the object test plan and then a stream. Now, the test plans can be searched, for example, with an asterisk as a wildcard. Here, we see all test plans in this project and stream. And we can also search by a term. With the preview UI, we can see the main information that helps us to select the correct object we are looking for. Now, we select a test plan and create the link. The link was successfully created. We can see the link from this part to the test plan in the link window. And from this link, we can navigate directly from our PLM system to our test management system ETM to the defined linked test plan. In EDDM, we have two types of link ends. Item link endpoints, symbolized by a circle. Links involving item endpoints are subject to EDDM change detection and follow changes. Element link endpoints symbolized by a square, involve endpoints that are fixed to a specific version of the data. In EDDM, all link combinations are possible. Element to item links, item to element links, item to item links, and element to element links. Now, let me show you a second example of data linking, the other way around. From a test report in our test management system to a document in our PLM system. In ETM, 
we select a project, then a test report, and here is our embedded EDDM icon. From here, we choose documents. Here again, this preview gives us a short insight in the information of the documents to be able to confirm our selection. And the link was created again. Here you can see the symbols for this item to item link. Now we can navigate directly back to Aras and see the link document. Now let us go to the second topic. EDDM is able to detect link endpoint changes automatically. With this part, let us take a look into this EDDM change detection capability, which informs the user about changes to any side of an EDDM link. Here, on the link status column, we can see different colors and symbols representing certain status of EDDM links. A green check mark means that the link is valid, the endpoints exist and have not changed. A red cross shows an invalid link. The link status becomes suspect, which is shown by a yellow exclamation mark when at least one link endpoint has changed. And as a fourth state, the link status becomes dangling if at least one link endpoint is lost. This is then represented by a gray crossed out circle. The user is able to change the status of the link, for example, in this case, from valid to invalid. And with the EDDM link editor, the EDDM link analysis can be done in more extension and bulk operations are also possible. Now, let us take a brief look at our data dependency graph or DDG. With our DDG, it is possible to see the linking hierarchy of all linked objects related to an instance. This eases the understanding of complex dependencies and allows an efficient analysis of changes. We use this data dependency graph also to select the appropriate version of data to fix a link as an element link. This is necessary to create EDDM link snapshots. Having converted all our EDDM links to element-to-element -element links, we are able to create a baseline. We can choose the predetermined name or change it. <coughs> Finally, the elements are selected and the baseline is created. The content of the baseline can be watched at any time, showing that snapshot of EDDM links. Thank you for watching. Let us continue with a more in-deep technical explanation of EDDM behind the scenes. Please, JK. Uh, thanks, Karina. Let me share my screen. I hope you're able to <coughs> see my screen. It's visible. So um, in this section, uh, we will go into the technical aspect of uh, how we implemented ADDM. Uh, we have used YSLC as a foundational building block extensively, uh, especially the concepts like linked data, um, service discovery, uh, delegated UI, um, and, and other capabilities. We also uh, uh, kind of skip some of the uh, standard uh, vocabularies and I, I'll explain why. And um, uh, <coughs> we have extended a little bit and kind of used the YSLC plus approach uh, for implementing EDDM. So when we enabled uh, EDDM between these containers, uh, some of the containers support uh, ED, um, YSLC natively. And, and objects like requirements to test case, so you can establish uh, OSLC uh, relationship. And these native uh, links are supported in EDDM. Uh, you can create this link natively, and that will reflect in EDDM. Similarly, you can create the link in EDDM, and it will reflect 
in um, uh, native uh, uh, UI as well. And extending that, uh, we have kind of enabled ability to link um, any of the exposed objects in a given container to um, any of the exposed objects in another container, and not just restricting to, restricting to the uh, standard uh, 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 links. And in, in, in addition to that, we have also uh, uh, some of these native um, objects have a native link, for example, from test plan to test case, uh, test script like that. Um, it has uh, native links to establish the data hierarchy. And these are also available in YSLC. Uh, from EDDM perspective, we kind of excluded these um, native links because EDDM links are essentially between two containers. And the links that are within the container um, or are not part of the EDDM uh, enterprise dependency. However, these uh, links are, are used and it comes to the data dependency graph and analysis. So when I take a um, um, top level requirement collection and expand it to all the um, requirements and then I, I can get the EDDM reference, EDDM links and go on to that nth level till, um, till uh, all the links are covered and use that as data dependency graph for reporting and analysis or uh, creating the baseline um, uh, link freezing. <clears throat> Another um, slight change that uh, we have adapted, uh, when we create a link between object A to B, uh, from EDDM perspective, it, it essentially means that object A depends on object B. Uh, any other semantic meaning is left to the business to um, interpret and use, and the tool itself does not impose any uh, constraints and uh, restrictions. And we, we started uh, enabling uh, EDDM links for RS PLM to um, ELM requirement, uh, this OPM uh, test manager. And we are extending that to requirements manager, IBM ELM requirements manager, and uh, this FMEA tool and big process documentation tool. And it's kind of built in a way that it, any other container, whether it is systems model, uh, modeling uh, container or a task manager, uh, manufacturing uh, planner can be seamlessly integrated into this platform. Kind of move on to uh, the, the, the integration architecture itself. So as you see, um, some of the con containers like IBM ELM natively support uh, YSLC capabilities, but uh, many of them don't. So in that case, we have used uh, Wipro's uh, YSLC adapter a custom adapter and this adapter, for example, when we add it to um, Aras Innovator, it provides this additional UI extensions for uh, bringing that uh, YSLC capability to Aras and then um, YSLC client and service, a domain model that exposes uh, PLM data like part, CAD, document in YSLC compatible way. And this is the standard YSLC part. In addition to that, um, we, we kind of create additional API for this link maintenance, data dependency graph and, and baseline API. And same thing for um, this ELM tool as well, even though uh, it provides YSLC uh, natively, some of these capabilities uh, we have to extend. So we use this EDDM wrapper to enable this API. And uh, we have also used this API, um, this wrapper to kind of enable the concept of um, the mutable items, the concept resource and uh, um, the elements, immutable elements. Um, so we, we did try using the standard YSLC model and native API, uh, but for our requirement, it proved a uh, little difficult. So we used the wrapper uh, for this as well. Another aspect of this uh, technical uh, implementation is the link maintenance. Um, we used um, message-based asynchronous uh, synchronization uh, utilities and that kind of maintains the link status, um, suspecting upon change in, change in the object uh, on either side of the link, or um, when the object gets deleted, maintaining the link uh, consistently. So that, that will be for uh, time constraint, I'm skipping that uh, detail of that, but we do have some content in this uh, uh, presentation as an actual for your reference. Uh, in summary, we have used um, YSLC extensively for um, implementation of EDDM and uh, we have extended it and changed uh, or kind of adapted the specification uh, to make it fit for this uh, pra uh, practical implementation uh, for this nature. With that, I will uh, conclude my um, talk and hand it over for uh, question and answer. 
Wonderful. Um, I, I'm going to speak for, for, I think, the, the series of questions that were coming through and, and just some of the, the, the feedback that we've been seeing as you've been going through this uh, presentation. It's been very impressive. Love to see the, the ambition as well as the pragmatics around utilizing OSLC in an enterprise like this. Um, we do have a few questions. Um, I know you were able to answer uh, a couple of those along the way. Um, but we have a few open items um, that are out here uh, that I'll ask you now. And then um, uh, as, as we keep going, if, if other questions come up, please use the Q&A, but we will try to stick to the timeline uh, for our second presenter here in a few moments. But um, the, the first few questions are from uh, David Honey from, from IBM, and um, they're, they're around the usage of OSLC. So I'll kind of group them a little bit together uh, or, or kind of follow on them together. Um, the first question is, is on validity. Um, are you using the link status, the, the EOM link validity, or is this a custom uh, concept of validity within your EDDM? That's a, complete, yeah. that's a completely custom concept. Um, we're not using the um, ELM definition at all because um, frankly speaking, it's not usable for us. Um, the reasons um, are a bit involved and um, that could be discussed offline, but it's it's not usable for us. Um, so therefore, a link status and validity is completely custom defined. Okay, well, I, I I will put that out there. I think that that is a discussion that several of us would love to have with you, and I think it's something that would be great to contribute to the OSLC community as a whole. So um, that that discussion on validity would be great in that community, and and definitely something that we should probably continue on the Slack chat because I know David as well as myself are very interested in and. In, uh, how that gets calculated and, and what usability can we get into the standard that makes that more extensible and valuable to others. Um, yes. The other, the next couple of questions um, are around uh, utilization of um, tracked resource sets. Uh, are you using TRS feeds um, in your EDDM in terms of no. either providing them or consuming them? No, we are not using them at all. Um, and uh, in a nutshell, uh, the reason is uh, that the concept um, of a resource um, set is so vastly different um, across different applications um, that we didn't um, try to, uh, to make this work. So therefore, our focus is intentionally very limited in the sense of model the dependency. Um, a link from A to B means um, A depends upon B, nothing else. And um, we do have a concept of what we call a change indicator, uh, which is used as the sole input um, for the uh, for the suspect um, calculation. Um, but we do not try to group um, various artifacts um, into resource sets and track them. Um, it would be possible via EDDM items, but um, that's something we didn't embark upon. Okay. Okay. That, 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 that tells me a lot. I think that it also helps answer this next question of whether or not um, the links from say POM are visible in doors next and the native EOM links tab. I'm assuming that they are not, um, they're in your EDM, EDDM uh, application, but, one, but please one, correct one, me. In fact, in fact, they are visible because this oh. is what we call local link storage. Um, whenever okay. a data container supports local link storage, um, we are also uh, placing um, EDDM links um, as local links. So you could, you could create from EDDM a link between a test case and a requirement. And that would show up as a native um, ELM link, and, and it would show up um, as an EDDM link, and you could edit it from both UIs, um, which are available from different ELM. Oh, okay. All right. And that, that's good to know. Um, and then I'll give you one last question, and, and we will go ahead and um, uh, transition over to our next presenter. And this has been very affordable. informative. Um, the next question is around, um, have you tried to link to... Uh, uh, between different, uh, like a mechanical process diagram and electrical diagram, is that is that in your scope or is that something that's that's not in your scope yet? Yes, uh, this is in our scope in the sense of um, that we can link to all um, PLM managed artifacts um, where mechanical, um, electrical, electronics um, all belongs to. Um, so we could link to to CAD documents. Uh, we could link to ECAD documents. And um, they would be displayed natively um, out of the um, out of the data container. In this case, um, the Aras platform. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you again uh, from our whole community. We appreciate you sharing this information and sharing your your successes. 
Um, and uh, without uh, another skip, we're going to head on to our next presentation. And uh, uh, please encourage you to uh, pay attention to the, any more questions and answers that are in here and, and participate in our, our Slack channel on uh, more discussions of this talk. So thank you so much.